but can I ask you to agree with me about that? Yes. Thank you. At this time, I would like to ask Mr. Dick Pogue to uh, introduce our first speaker, Mr. David Balkum. Well, nice crowd. Glad to see you out tonight. Uh, when Carol called me and asked me to introduce David, I was honored. I have known David for quite a while and know him pretty well. And it's my honor to introduce him. I'll give you a very brief profile. David is homegrown. He's a Sulphur Springs boy, graduated from school here, went to Baylor, graduated from Baylor, met his future wife there, Sandra, and uh, she's here and his mother-in-law. And if you meet Ms. Sale, you'll understand where Sandra got her beauty and charm. And uh, so be sure you speak to Ms. Sale here tonight. David uh, served in the military and uh, after he and Sandra married, they lived in West Texas for a while. She's a West Texas girl. They moved back here in 1976. He bought a business, an insurance agency, and since then he's bought several more. He's been active in uh, civic responsibilities. He's uh, served on the city council. He served as mayor of Sulphur Springs. He's served uh, in some state roles. He has worked with the state medical board for 13 years and is currently a board member and travels to Austin every month for a meeting with the board there. So he knows the medical side as well as the insurance side. Uh, he has served on the Sulphur River Basin Authority. Uh, on a personal note, uh, David's a Bible teacher, teaches a couple's Bible class. He's a deacon at the church where he serves. He's the father of three, the grandfather of nine, and something I must tell you, he has one grandson. His oldest grandson is a graduating senior of the U.S. Air Force Academy. His second oldest grandson is a freshman of the U.S. Naval Academy. David will go to the Air Force Navy football game this year and be completely silent. <laughs> so folks, give David Balcom a warm Sulphur Springs welcome. Thank you, Dick. And uh, I wish you could stand up here and see this wonderful crowd. Wow, I'm very impressed. Thank you for coming. It's a uh, wonderful thing to have people that are involved and interested and want to know what's going on in their country. Uh, on the way over here, I was thinking about the time-honored uh, pattern that we've had in this country of going to town hall meetings all the way back to our founding. Uh, it's a time when we get together and talk about what's going on, make suggestions, and see if we can work things out along with our elected officials. Um, I'm just thankful to be here and be a part of this tonight. And uh, I want to say thanks to uh, not only you for coming, but to these gentlemen for coming from Mount Pleasant. Uh, we appreciate your coming. And what they have to say will be extremely important because they have lived in the kind of a system that is now being proposed for our country. We've never lived in that kind of a system. And from what we hear about the way it is in Canada and the United Kingdom, uh, I, for one, don't want to live in that kind of a system. Um, let me get this straight. The federal government is wanting to uh, put one-sixth of the economy into a federally controlled agency and let that agency completely control our health delivery system. Now this is, this is a government that has done the following. The most recent uh, program that we're all familiar with is Cash for Clunkers. I think that is a very well named uh, program. I have a, a son-in-law who works in two large dealerships 
auto dealerships in Houston. They have sold over $400,000 worth of new cars, and yet, to date, they have received absolutely not one penny from the federal government. Uh, folks, they can't even give money away effectively. And that's, that's what's going on. Uh, let's look at a few more things they're involved in. The U.S. Postal Service, which we all have had all of our lives and uh, use almost daily probably, tells us that the postal people tell us right now that they will be in uh, overdrawn $7 billion this year. The cost will overrun their revenues. I, I just wonder, how do you do that with a monopoly? But that's what they've done. Uh, our Social Security system, which is hallowed ground for many in this room and many uh, family members in this room, is hopelessly, hopelessly uh, heading towards bankruptcy. If you or anyone in your family has gone into the Social Security system recently, you received a, a publication from the administration stating on the, pay, on the front page, it states, Unless Congress makes some kind of a change in the program, this system will become bankrupt within the next 12 to 14 years. Now, I didn't say that. The Republicans didn't say that. The Social Security system said it about themselves. Medicare is in worse shape. It will become bankrupt before Social Security without changes made to it. Last Friday, uh, the administration made this announcement. They said, you know, we have uh, underestimated what the uh, deficit will be in the administration for the next 10 years. By the way, up to that point, they had said it was $9 trillion. I have no idea what trillion dollars is. But $9 trillion deficit. And they said, by the way, we need to correct that it will be $11 trillion. To me, I don't know about you, but that just sounds like somebody that doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, and be kind. But uh, these are the folks that want us to put our confidence in them and say, we want you to run our health system. We want you to take care of our needs. This is an, basically an insurance program that we're talking about. When you go to an agent to ask for insurance, whether it be life or health or property or whatever it happens to be, maybe it's annuity, you want to ask some questions about your company. How safe are they? Are they reliable? What's their track record? Just common sense questions we all ask. And so I would ask you those same questions about the Postal Service, about Social Security, about our $11 trillion projected deficit in the next 10 years. Would, is that the kind of agency and administration you want to place your health care in? No. Well, I agree with you. I don't either. Um, just over a week ago, NBC did a poll, and they um, asked the American people several things about the proposed legislation. And I want to just take just a few moments, and I promised several people as I came in tonight that I was going to be brief. I'm going to just take a few seconds and, uh, and not talk long. I think there's something about an insurance agent talking, and people's eyes just glaze over. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And they say, I don't understand what that guy is talking about. And I don't want to be guilty of that tonight. 42% uh, of the people in this poll said uh, they didn't think this was a good idea. Now, I think that's a strange number. I think it's a lot higher than 42, really. But 42% had some very serious concerns 